Hello there ladies and gentlemen, Sigvold here and welcome back to another video. So some of you were not too happy in the last video that I destroyed uh, boss grods using the beta club, an artifact that uh, you don't have access to and that's understandable to an extent, but look, we got a free to play version over here for you to enjoy. So uh, League of Anarchy will do a pretty good number on him, the trick is to have the Kryptonite Spear, which is a free artifact that you're going to get for completing uh, normal difficulty in Rise of Krypton. Soul Raids, but look, if you don't have the Kryptonite Spear yet, most likely you don't have the League of Anarchy either, so some advice for that possibility too. He's going to have a shield, right? You're going to be able to use him plant supplement to deal percentage damage against him, right? But you should not do it in the shield. When is his shield not gonna get triggered? When he's either stunned, which you can do yourself with uh, uh, Emerald Green Lantern support character with the stun on basic Stagion or with the Cloud Forest, or if you don't have access to that either, what you can do is just wait for him to do a special, because after he does a special, just as the player, the AI will have a little bit of a cooldown before they can uh, do an R special, so after he does a special, he's susceptible to a swipe right into a third special. So yeah, there you go, some advice, some uh, practical um, stuff, and uh, let's move on. Here we have a fight against Boss Captain Cold and I'm going to use Dark Metal cards, uh, Bad Ninja Catwoman. By the way, at this point I should mention the passive stats that I have on this account. So I have a level 4 and a level 1 God Killer, that's going to be all the passive stats we get for this. And I'm going to have a third level Dark Metal cards on Bad Ninja Catwoman. She has the build, same as Harley, to get to 500% crit damage with Dark Metal card equipped because uh, it makes the crit damage that would normally uh, not bypass the 300% cap in the build to bypass it after you equip it. So yeah, we're just going to pin him to the corner, keep combo and chopping him using third specials and second specials from time to time. The use of second special is to uh, bear stack the lethal. We obviously don't need healing here. Another thing that's not really necessary, maybe I would have actually done more damage, or maybe not really. Like, Grod is not the most essential thing in this team, since we don't need to reduce attack or reduce armor. But at the same time, unless I have Beta Club on Dead Ninja Catwoman, putting something else to buff will most likely not make up for the uh, lack in power generation that that swap provides. And uh, yeah, I think I think this is still the best choice for the non-Beta Club Bed Ninja team, just going with the full team. But look, if you don't have Grod, by all means, use something else and still use this team. They're going to do well, just it's going to be a little bit more inconvenient. You can use Silver Bane, for example, here. But yeah, quite good performance for the Batman Ninja team here, 171 mil, I'm happy with that. We're going to do a little bit of a cleanup fight here, we have the Just League team. I'm not using Just League Aquaman because the only thing it provides is Armor Pierce and I don't think I really need it here. So we're going to have Silver Bane to provide us with more damage on basic attack hits. That's going to synergize well with, with uh, Just League Flash because his whole thing is dealing damage to basic attack hits. I was thinking in comparison. How is this team able to pull so much damage because the single hit values on the Batman Ninja Catman, for example are going to be all the way to 500k at points and this man barely gets 100 taper hits but then again he has 4 fast attack hits so every single swipe let's say that's also fast attack hit is going to be 400k so while it's not gonna get anywhere close to the Batman Ninja team values I think this team if I had the full time on this fight can easily get, let's say, 120 to 130 mil damage, and it's definitely going to be a good team. Again, Dark Metal cards on uh, Flash, and also I have for Flash the 500% uh, uh, crit damage build. I do recommend it on pretty much all your damage dealers for the most part, unless, of course, you have the Beta Club. Uh, in that case, you should build characters accordingly, but on the secondary account, I don't have that, so... All my damage there pretty much are built for 500% crit damage with the Dark Metal cards. Just amazing artifact. Here we have a cleanup fight against uh, Boss Harley. She is quite annoying, but uh, we finally got her down to a decent amount of health. And we're going to squeeze the uh, Server Banshee team in there for a little bit of a cleanup. We're going to search back in there. Try to come on chop there, but she did a jump attack into a special too. Amazing stuff. And I get hit again. Sir Banshee in there. Also lost one disable in the meantime. I do have the God Killer on Reverse Flash, but I prefer to combo and chop still. 
because I don't find the infinite combo that you can do with God Care with Flash. I don't find it reliable in the situations that work here in this fight in terms of the specific taggings that we do. Two hits, combo interrupt. Combo interruption is reliable, like as reliable as I can do it reliably and as reliable as she doesn't do a swipe down, but still I do prefer that uh, instead of the infinite combo in this situation. Same cool went for the Justic Flash, because some of you might be using in the already, you might be happy that Oh, I can finally use Gut Killer Flash for infinite combo damage dealer with the Justic team and also get the passive stats from it. And I guess if you can't come on chop, that's definitely a valid strategy. But I, I wouldn't personally recommend that. You, you'd rather combo in chop because you're losing the Dark Null cards if you're using God Killer for the infinite combo. And that's not really worth it, in my opinion. But yet again, if you just can't combo in chop or if you haven't learned that yet, then the God Killer is definitely going to be the go to in terms of uh, artifacts for the Just League team. Another special one in there. Gonna jump over that. Boy, she is annoying. We need to get her back to the corner or kill either one of them. And she got uh, reset in the middle of the field after super move. She have tags her banshee in there, but managed to come when chop thankfully. Her banshee in there, third special. Only one one disabled there because one of them expired. So fat rip in that regard. Not a special one there. And when going for trade disables here actually, because I just didn't want to bother with uh, her specials anymore. There we go. So her banshee in there, and that's going to be it for this fight. Quite reliable team, with Sir Mansion, not gonna lie, no complaints here. So here I, I wanted to try this thing, you, you might have seen this team in the past, I did try this team in the past, and it did a decent job. So here I wanted to actually go ahead and try to um, not stack that much lethal Brainiac, because that was uh, kind of something that uh, took a long ass time. By all means, you should use our Raven League of Anarchy team. Not, not with this team, but I used the Gronky team without Raven because they didn't rate Raven, so we, we can have a little bit of fun with this fight. But yeah, here I kind of attempted to build the Darkness stacks at first and then stack a few lethal stacks with Brainiac, but this was an unoptimal thinking back on it. Like, the way I did it first time when we got the decent performance out of this team was I just went in there with Brainiac and in one minute I got all the uh, 10 lethal stacks, then I stacked Darkness with Raven and then tagged... Uh, uh, Collector vs Superman uh, to see how much damage he can do. Now I wanted to kind of do a middle ground test to see how well we would do on 4 to 5 lethal stacks in terms of damage and if we did well then I would try also Raven plus Collector without stacking any lethal and just keeping Brainiac in there for the passive attack but uh, it's not worth it. This is definitely not worth it. Because with full lethal stacks, we are getting like 30 to maybe 40 mil damage on the third special. Maybe that's an exaggeration, maybe 30. But yeah, we, we lost darkness there. By the way, that, that was not my fault. That was not my fault. This is what pissed me off the most about this fight. That loss of darkness was not my fault. I did my combo normally. I was gonna do special one on time. I pressed the special one and there was the little special delay bug that happens from time to time and she just didn't do the special one in time and he blocked it and we lost all the darkness. That also contributed to this team sucking. But uh, yeah, I think from now on just, just go full detail stacking at the start and then uh, put the darkness stacks in there because by doing this we didn't really get too much more time out of collector dealing damage we, we were all over the place with this fight not gonna lie this was unoptimal if you do lethal stacks at the start you just know i got that done then getting the raven stacks done and then we can cycle between raven and collector and it's gonna be a good time overall and the damage was fine, it's a little bit more than I usually get with Collector because of those last 40 seconds when we actually got to deal some damage, but uh, definitely not the optimal way to do it. Special one there, Collector back in, third special. Come on, chopped again. Another third special. Three hits here, Raven mid combo tagging into a special one. I think this is the most optimal cycle between Raven and Collector. They're special in there again. And yeah, this this could have gone so so much better. But sadly it did not. It is okay though, because this dude doesn't have that much health, so um, what we can do now is just use Kim Flan Sacrament in there. 
Also, there we go. No Nora Snow Globe Team Flan Sakom. I never heard of it. It's been a while since we have seen that team, hasn't it? So, for this one uh, specifically, we're going to um, uh, go ahead and have Dr. Fate here with the level 5 God Killer and Right Hood with the level 1 God Killer. Right Hood is in there to extend the duration of the fight if we need to do so. Most likely, we will need. And uh, Dr. Fate is there to reduce the power cost, obviously. You pretty much always see Dr. Fate at this point with the Kim Flan Sakuman team. Either it's Kim Flan Sakuman with Nora Snow Globe or Kim Flan Sakuman plus Raven. Dr. Fate is always there. They are best bros. They are kind of inseparable, so that was to be expected. Also, I have the 500% great damage bill on Kim Flan Sakuman as well on this account, because as I said, I don't have Beta Club, so. Yeah, this is the damage stealing artifact that we're always going to use on him. And if we want Nora Snow Globe used, then the additional free damage doesn't really hinder us by anything. We got Super Unveil, we're going to let him use it on Dr. Fate. Could have let King tank that because it honestly did not do any damage, which is to be expected. Tier 1 bosses, am I right, guys? Dr. Fate back in. Trying to push him back to the corner. And backed off there because he used a jump attack. Thankfully he didn't use any specials. I think we were too close because this dude's specials are ranged and he feels like we need to be far away enough from for him for him to be safe to use his specials. Come on chopped again. Super move. Doctor Fate back in. Come on chop there. Keep pushing him. Him back in there. Third special again. Maximum stacks and guaranteed crits. It doesn't get better than this. On swipes we're getting uh, 300k per hit when it's a fast stack hit. Well, roughly that. So yeah, we're just going to keep combo interrupting him in the corner and using third specials when when it's needed. Look, I do love Nora Snow Globe. I, I really like that addition to the game and this is especially a great artifact for the free-to-play players because they are going to be able to pull some amazing damage with little to no investments. But at the same time I kind of miss using Kimflan Sakuman like a damage throw like this because I very rarely get to do so because on the other account we use Beta Club Raven, on this one we use Nora Snow Globe. So yeah, this is the old, the good old Kimflan Sakuman damage dealing gameplay and uh, not gonna lie, I kind of missed it, but at the same time, I, I, I do enjoy the damage of Nora Snow Globe and I can't, I can't really justify a lot of times this type of gameplay. But that's gonna be it for Deadshot, I think I called him Deathstroke a, a couple of times, so yeah, fat rip on that one. But yeah, the rewards were as usual garbage, I have Classic Superman maxed out, I didn't really need it, and the artifact was useless. But yeah, thanks so much for watching and goodbye, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. This is the future.